most modern browsers now implement uh, significant chunks of the new tags in HTML5, which is really great to see. So it helps anyone who's been working on uh, semantic HTML really upgrade their sites immediately that work very well. And in fact, uh, earlier in, uh, in today's talk, uh, I covered a technique called uh, Bulletproof HTML5 that lets you uh, style new elements, whether it's in current browsers or in modern browsers that support them. And the, the places that I think HTML5 is going that is interesting is in sort of two, two kind of categories. One is the category of, of uh, small improvements that everyone can start using right away. And I think that's kind of exciting because there's a lot of things in HTML4, or XHTML, if you're a seasoned developer, that are these really weird edge cases. And HTML5 cleans up a lot of that. The other is uh, what's captured the imagination of you know, web developers everywhere, which is all the awesome multimedia features. The vector graphics with Canvas, uh, the video, native audio and video features. And there, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to build some amazing applications and proofs of concept. Um, but the challenge is that making all that work cross-browser, or in the video case, cross-format, because not all the browsers support any one single format, uh, make that quite a, quite a big uh, challenge to overcome. If you want to pick just one big breakthrough, it's really this overarching trend towards the open web applications platform. And that's being supported and built by W3C, by other groups like microformats.org, uh, OpenID folks, OAuth. And the one thing that's bringing them all together is this focus on being able to build applications for the web that work just as well as your native application on your desktop or on your iPhone or on your iPad. And I think what we're going to see, we've seen a lot of prototypes and experiments of people building amazing things that work in one or two browsers. What we're really going to see uh, like a breakthrough tipping point is when either people develop techniques that allow them to build these amazing interfaces across browsers so they can ship it and it works great and everyone's like, wow, I can depend on this. Then you're going to see this amazing renaissance in applications that are shipped on production websites, on indie websites all that kind of thing. Um, the other is that most applications that are native, say like on a desktop or an iPhone uh, or an iPad, are typically their own little silos. Like you get to interact with the application, but not with your friends. There are a few exceptions, like there's words with friends and a few things like that, but they're not very social. They're not, they're not web-like at all. It's, it's as if that they've sort of forgotten or completely missed, you know, had blinders on to all the network lessons we've learned for the past 15, 20 years. And I think what HTML5 and this broader web applications platform is going to do is once there's f roughly uh, even parity between the fidelity of user interface that you can build with HTML5 and CSS3 and JavaScript, well, web developers naturally build sites with social on their brain. It's just a given that that's what you build into the site. You know, if you're building a game, it's not just your game that you're saving your scores with in your saved state, it's your game with all your friends that you're interacting with, maybe you're competing on scores, maybe you're sharing resources, all that kind of thing. And I really think that, uh, you know, we see this, when you see this huge renaissance in, in high fidelity web applications that are social as well, and it's really going to kind of turn the tables, I think, on a lot of more traditional native applications as a result. I think a lot of people now are, are taking for granted that mobile web usage is growing much faster than say desktop or laptop uh, web usage, which means that people are using those devices more so than they're using their big screens. So there's a bunch of different things going on there. The first is that they're using those devices on the go. And the way that you interact with a device when you're standing up, when you're running around, you're walking around, when you're mobile, when you're not at home, is actually very different than when you're sitting at home. And there are interesting sensitivities. So like when you're sitting at home, if, if you're working with a web application, it's kind of slow. You're just kind of like, oh, whatever, I'll just go do something else. Maybe I'll like start the laundry or something and keep working on it. But if you're out and about, every single second counts. So I think what we're going to see is web designers and developers, especially if they start using their own applications uh, in mobile settings like with an Android or an iPhone or Blackberry or iPad, that there's going to be a lot less patience for websites that are slow 
And so as a result, I think we're gonna see a lot uh, more efficient sites that use good clean semantic markup, that use efficient JavaScript, maybe taking advantage of some new web APIs like the, like the web workers uh, APIs that let you run multiple threaded uh, JavaScript and probably uh, some of the storage APIs as well that let your web application store information on the device rather than having to go over the network for all the information all the time. So I'm really excited to see what people build with those and, and build for the harsher environment of mobile, as it were. There really is no excuse, right? Networks have gotten faster, CPUs have gotten faster, we've gotten a lot more storage. Uh, if, you watch, if you watch kids playing games, like on their little Game Boys, or even on like, say, like an you know, iPod Touch or whatever, right? They don't have any patience. Like if, if the thing slow down at all, they just get bored and they move on to something else. Uh, so I've, you know, I've never understood why we should have any patience with our productivity apps or web browsing either for that matter. I mean, why isn't using the web as fast as playing a video game? Mm -hmm.